All right, as you can tell, I'm getting a super early start. The eastern horizon's just barely getting bright. But I've come into the Mississippi River Gulf Outlet, a deep channel where speckled trout stack up this time of year. This is my first trip of the season here. I know there are a few fish in this area. And the first object of the day is to see if I can catch one on a jerk bait up against these rocks. Let's see. Now I like throwing these jerk baits first thing in the morning against these rocks before that sun has a chance to get up. I feel like the fish run along these rocks when the visibility is low, but once it gets up, they kind of retreat. They get a lot harder to catch on these jerk baits. You can catch some really, really nice speckled trout doing this. And this is a jerk bait. I, I went shopping in my in my shed yesterday. I just happened to find this. It's a it's a Berkeley jerk bait, runs about three to five feet deep. I don't remember the name of it. I'll have to look it up. But it definitely looks like it should produce. And I like the the way the knocker inside of this thing sounds. I don't know if you can see yet, but this water's really, really pretty in this channel. Very pretty. We've got a light northwest wind. It's supposed to be cloudy all day, but as you can tell, it's it's clear right now. There's some wispy clouds in the sky. Got a pretty good chance of rain later. And today is a Sunday, so <laughs> it's gonna be crowded, I know that. It'd be nice to get a big trout before the crowds get out here. There's a ton of boats that are collecting up ahead, maybe about, I don't know, three quarters of a mile down there. That tells me it's probably where the fish bit yesterday. And a couple of those boats have come since I've been out here, so they made a beeline right for that area. That tells you something. But I kind of like getting out on my own and finding my own fish. Now I came through a lock, well actually a couple locks to get out here. A lot of constriction at those locks, so you can really tell what the tide is doing. and it's screaming in. At some point today we'll endure a change because a lot of the nearby buoys, the tide's already falling. So it's going to change at some point. And it's turning out to be an absolutely beautiful sunrise. What's remarkable out here is these stretch of rocks all look very similar, but they're not. These fish will group up in certain areas and not in others. So just because what you're doing isn't working in one area, doesn't mean it wouldn't produce a bunch of fish in another one. So you kind of always have this internal dilemma. Do you just keep covering water with your trolling motor, hoping to run across a school, or do you pick up and run, go to a different stretch? I think I'm going to do the latter in a minute. I've probably fished a couple hundred yards without a bite. And this stretch I just fished was my best stretch last year. <laughs> so it just goes to show you, you got to find them every year. All right, we're going to make a little mosey. Just run up maybe a a mile or so, see if we can find some fish. Just a slight change of address. We'll see if it makes a difference. We're still not up to where all those boats are, and I'm sure there's some fish there. There's a fish. There we go. All right, good speckled trout. Good trout. Spot locked. Let's see if you got any buddies. All right. Good trout. Good trout. I will take him for sure. He was out off those rocks a little bit. Not uncommon. Of course, you never know if they follow the bait out or if they were just holding out. This episode of Marshman Mass On is brought to you by Publius Sporting Goods. All right, one thing you don't want to do when you get a fish is just go blowing by there. I've had numerous trips where you just kind of sit on spot lock and catch sometimes even up to a limit. Sometimes that's the only fish in the area, but usually there are some others. Oh, well, there's the cloud deck that's coming in. It will definitely be cloudy here before very long. We had a, a little front come through last night. Winds are out of the northwest, but they're not too strong. Probably about five knots or so. Certainly not dead calm, but I'd take fishing conditions like this any day. Really beautiful day. Temps in the mid to upper 40s, probably upper 40s by now. All right, apparently that fish was a lone ranger, so I'm just gonna continue on with my drift. Ooh, you dirty, dirty dog. 
shoot. Well, that's bad news. <laughs> this is a new reel, a loose custom light, and I haven't really gotten it dialed in yet. So on that cast, I backlashed and it threw my bait off. That bait does float. I might be able to find it, but I doubt it. Let's go look. Of course, it's the only one like that that I brought. It was the only one I had. Let's go see if we can find it. Maybe we'll get lucky. Oh, there it is. I see it. I see it. All right, catch of the day right there. All right, back in business. Let's see if we can catch another speckled trout. Oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, goodness, that's a beast. Please be as big as I think you are. Let's get out that trolling motor. Let's get out the trolling motor. Yeah, no, he's not as big as I thought. <laughs> Whew, man. He's, I mean, believe me, he's a nice fish. I'm going to net him. But man, when he came up the first time, I thought he was a beast. I thought he was a giant. Oh, you freaking fish, come over here. All right, we got him, we got him. It's a good fish. He also was off of the rocks, way off. All right. Yeah, he was hooked well. One in the mouth and one just outside the gill. There here comes a boat. Be a good time to get this fish off. Fishing these hard plastics, you don't get the bites in general that you do when you're jigging, but man, it's just a lot of fun. The hits are ferocious and you generally catch nicer fish. Doesn't mean you don't catch any small fish doing this. You certainly do. Sometimes you can bring the bait up close to the boat and you'll see fish fighting over it. Generally that's smaller fish, but you can catch some real giants doing this. Now, as far as getting hooks in these fish, just about any rod will do. But if you want to actually land a significant percentage of them, you're much better off. If you fish braid with a fluorocarbon leader, of course, you want to throw a medium light rod. If you fish mono or straight fluoro, you can get by with a, a medium rod. Even then, I'd prefer a medium light. You definitely want a rod that's got a good bit of give because those fish have all the leverage with that heavy bait in their mouths. And you know, a big speckled trout has just as soft a mouth as a small speckled trout, but he's got a lot more power to pull free of the bait. Oh, there's a fish. He's also way out. Oh, come on, stay on, stay on, you beast. Stay on. Oh, oh good fish. All right. Oh, no. Oh, that ain't good. He's in my cooler rope. Well, let's get the fish off first. All right, they're all out the same mold. Really, really healthy, solid fish. Now let's see if we can get this out the ice chest handle. There we go. All right, I really don't want to lose that hook because so far I haven't lost a fish. Which tells me these hooks are pretty good. And they're just stock hooks, I didn't change them. Now for that fish, I, I kind of backed off because the previous two fish hit me real close to the boat and that one hit way out. So now that sun's up a little bit, you can really see how pretty that water is. I mean, it's just, it's just perfect. The water in here seldom gets filthy, seldom, very seldom. If you've seen some of my previous videos that I shot in Lake Pontchartrain, 
you know the lake has been just insanely clear throughout this whole fall and that's kind of the area that feeds this canal through the industrial canal so this is pretty much the same water as what's in Lake Pontchartrain and if you saw some of my previous Lake Pontchartrain videos you know that I downsized to 12 pound fluoro because this water is so clear and it's definitely made a difference for me 12 pound fluoro leader I, I do fish mainline braid 30 pound braid well so far I haven't been able to stop and catch more than one fish in an area. After I catch one, I've tried to stop and bomb cast that area. I guess I should throw a jig real quickly just to see. But the bad thing with this jerkbait bite, when the sun's out like this, it's got a shelf life. And when they turn off of it, they're done. Now my favorite bait color in water, this clarity, is a holy jolly matrix shad. Had great success on this bait here in the MRGO, just like crazy good. And of course I got that fish on a 3 8 ounce death grip jig head. Now the thing with jig in the MRGO, you never really know where the fish are located. They could be right up against the rocks, they could be off this second ledge, you just don't ever know. And sometimes they're just really scattered all over the place. But a lot of times you could put the motor on spot lock and leave an hour later with your 25 fish limit. Just throw in the exact same spot one more cast it's hard for me to jig when they're biting the jerk baits just know on any cast you've got a shot at a four or five pound fish on those jerk baits the fish we've caught so far today are not quite in that range but they're still really nice fish really solid a lot of fun to fight all right i can't do this i can't do this when they're biting the jerk bait this episode of Marshman Mass On is brought to you by H&H &H Lure Company and by Versamax Corks and by Seto New Orleans and by Plaquemines Parish and by Community Motors. I think I'm going to stick with my technique of kind of hanging off the rocks a little bit. So I didn't do it very long and I got that last fish. Ooh, you suck. Why would you hit me and not get those hooks? Why? Why? And that fish was out too. I mean, out, out. Wasting my time up close to those rocks. I'm probably going right over the fish. Just amazing. I mean, where my bait is is at least 10 feet deep. Are those fish hugging the bottom and coming up? Or are they suspended? Are they cruising around the surface? Who knows? I don't know. I mean, the bait's a three to five foot diver with braid I know it's not getting down that far I'd say three max oh there we go that's a good fish holy please stay on that's a good fish oh it came off goodness <sighs> that sucks man <laughs> that was a good fish Oh, goodness. Oh, that hurts. That was a good fish. That could have been a four or five pound trout. It was ripping drag. Did not feel like a red, felt like a trout. Oh, that hurts. That fish was actually a little closer to the rocks. I felt one of the hooks slip, but he was still connected. And then of course the other one slipped. I'll think about that one tonight when I'm laying in bed. Shoot. All right, a fish just hit me on the way up. I literally saw it. It was not a big fish, but it was a keeper. I'm going to jig this real quick. Maybe if I can catch a few right here, relieve some of the pain of losing that big fish. All right, I'm starting to get a clue that these fish are suspended today. I can't get a bite on a jig. And the bites I am getting are out off the rocks about three feet down. So don't fight it if it's not happening. I'm going to stick with the jerk bait as long as they want to hit it. Ooh, there's one. There's one. Not as big as the one I lost, but. It's 
It's about in the same mold as the ones we're catching. Also way away from the rocks. Oh, he's file hooked. He's a bit smaller, but still a keeper. Nice fish. All right. Got a little too close there, buddy. All right. I mean, it's still a 15 inch fish. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, I figured out the name of this bait. Because <laughs> it's actually written on the bottom. It's called a juke, a Berkeley juke. Not a bait I've fished before, ever. But I promise you, I promise I will fish this bait again. I'll go digging through my tackle shed and see if I can find some more of them. It's rare for me to be this impressed with stock hooks, but these have done a really good job today. I did lose that one really big fish, but just part of the deal when you're throwing jerk baits, you are gonna lose some. And who knows, I may miss my next five and cut this bait off and throw it up in the rocks. <laughs> but so far, I'm pretty impressed. Oh, there's a fish. There's a fish. That's a good one. That's a good fish. That's the first one I've caught on spot lock. And that's a good one. Unfortunately, a boat's passing. I want to kind of downplay this. Oh, that's a good fish. I haven't seen him yet. He's definitely got an opinion. Yep, he's a good trout. Let's get this net. Come on, dude. I know you're not that big. Ah. All right. Good quality trout. Not as big as the one we lost, that's for sure. But I'm not complaining. I will take him. He was kind of foul hooked. That's why he felt bigger than he was. But still, good solid speckled trout. Look at this guy. Nothing wrong with that. Man, what a great morning catching fish on a new bait in familiar water. And best of all, I'm gonna get home before my wife is even home from church. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the Marshman Masson channel on YouTube. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we post a new video. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we'll see you right here on Marshman Masson.